Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. Today we're going to be starting off this geometry course by looking at points, lines, and planes, which are the building blocks for anything else that you do in plane geometry. Obviously, if you're watching this off of Moodle, you don't need information about Moodle. You know how to do that, so let's get into it here. We're going to define a few terms first, point, line, and plane, and then draw a few simple pictures. So these are probably terms you're familiar with in previous, from previous courses, and you've honestly been working with them probably since grade school. So, point. We're going to start with the point. Plain and simply, it's a location in space. It's someplace you're going to name it with a single capital letter. For example, if we have a point right there, I might call that point A. In a picture of it, there's a point. Draw a point. Pretty straightforward. A line is going to be a series of points that extend forever. All right? They extend forever. And that's really critical. A line extends forever. Note that something called a line segment does not. The segment actually stops. How to name that, you're going to use two capital letters, and I'll draw a picture for you in a moment after I get rid of some of this text. And a plane is going to be a flat surface that extends forever. All right. And it's made up of multiple points. You can think of this, these three concepts here as being one-dimensional, two-dimensional, and three-dimensional. Naming these things, like I said, with points, you just use one capital letter. Lines, you're going to use two capital letters. And then planes, believe it or not, you're going to be using three capital letters. Picture here. Like I said, a point is going to be just a single location in space. I'm going to call this point A. A line, I'm going to use two points on the line. So if I have a point right here, a line going through, and another point right here, if this is point A and this is point B, I'm going to name this line, line AB. And importantly, I'm going to draw a line over it with a couple arrows indicating that it's going to extend on forever. A plane is any three-dimensional surface. I'll change up to blue here. Any three-dimensional surface that's flat. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a three-dimensional surface here. It might have several points like point A, point B, and point C. And I would call this plane just plane ABC. So if we go into an example of this, scrolling down on our notes here, we have a plane. It's made up of points A, B, C, D. We have another point E that's on top of it, kind of making a pyramid structure. We have several lines, like from E to C, E to B, E to A, E to D, several lines, and then several line segments from like B to C. Notice how it stops. It'd be a line segment. So I'm going to list off a few things here. First off, some lines. I see that from E to C, there's a series of points, extends on forever. So I'm going to name this EC. There's also one I see going from E to B. I'm going to go ahead and label that one as well. We have one going from E to B. So those are several lines. We have E to B, E to C, E to A, E to D. It does not matter which order we go in. So I could say BE instead. That'd be totally fine to say. Looking at line segments, remember line segments, like I said, they stop. That'd be, for example, AB. If you look from A to B, it just stops. It doesn't continue on on either side. So I say that's going to be AB, and a segment is going to be named with a segment up top, no arrows. So another one, think about it for a moment to look at this picture. Where would another segment be? There are actually three of them. A to D, D to C, and C to B would be other line segments within this drawing. So I could say something like C to B would be another segment. There we go. One other term that you're going to need to be familiar with, something called coplanar. We're going to break that word down here, this co part here first. 
co, if you have a co-worker, they work with you. Um, co generally means if you have a company, a company is a body of people that work together. Co means together. Planar is a plane. Together a plane. Four coplanar points are four points that are on a plane together. Similarly, a term called collinear is on a line together. So coplanar on a plane together. An example of this would be like A, B, C, and D. Points A, B, C, and D are all on a plane together. So A, B, C, and D are all coplanar to one another. There's another term out there that you're probably going to want to write down, collinear. I always forget that it's spelled with two L's. Starting to remember that after four years here. Collinear, if you want to guess here, co again, together. I bet you can guess what linear means. Line. So collinear is going to be on the same line. Let's look at a couple examples of how we can use this with some, uh, with some arithmetic and some algebra. If we're given the information y is between x and z, remember these are each capital letters, so they represent points. y is between x and z. I'm going to draw this here. It might not be perfectly drawn as far as um, proportions go, but I'm just going to go ahead and draw this situation. y is between x and z. So I have x here. I have z over here. And y is somewhere between them. I'm going to draw a point y as well. We have a line segment going between them. We are given that x to z is 14. We know that this distance here from x to z is a 14. And we know that from y to z is an 11.4. If we want to know how long xz is, or xy, excuse me, xy is now, well, what distance does this need to be for this problem to make sense? This whole thing's 14, this is 11.4. Remember, I didn't draw it to scale. This would need to be, what, 14 minus the 11.4, which is a 2.6. This would need to be a 2.6. So we would say that xy is equal to 2.6 then. And again, we got that from just doing the 14 minus the 11.4 be equal to that xy distance. We can also do this with algebra. Suppose we have this situation. We know that s is between r and t. We're given a situation here. It has several x's in it. We're introducing variables this time. I can go ahead and write an equation for this. Looking at this picture here, note that this r to s distance if we add that distance to this s to t distance, that'd be the same as going from r to t. All right. So similarly with algebra here, if we want to write this out as an algebraic expression, we could say 2x plus 7 plus the 28 algebraic expression equals, we'll put it into an equation, 4x. And then we can go ahead and solve with algebra from there. We can remember from Algebra 1, we need to combine like terms. 7 plus a 28 is going to be a 35. Over here, we still have a 2x. And on the other side of the equation, we still have an equals 4x. Now I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 2x from both sides, so as to simplify this equation a little farther. This will simplify down to give us something like 35 is equal to 2x. And if you remember from algebra, if you're given something like 35 is equal to 2x, we need to get x by itself. We're going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2. So we're going to get an x equals 17.5. And we're not done with our problem yet. Notice what the problem is asking. Example 3, find rt in this diagram. Find RT in this diagram. I see that RT is 4X. We currently have X equals 17.5. What do we need to do? We need to plug that in. So let's go ahead and do that 4 times the 17.5. Now, we need to multiply these numbers. I do know that 2 times 17.5 is a 35, so we just need to double it again, double 35 again. That's going to be a 70. So we'd say that that RT distance 
is equal to 70. Let's go ahead and define a few things here, and then we'll look at one more example. Here's a definition for you. We're going to be looking at midpoints. And midpoints are classically defined with an M. The midpoint M of AB is the point that is equidistant. Or excuse me, excuse me. It's the point that bisects something. If you look at that root word bi, if you think bicycle has two wheels, something to bisect and that sect, think about dissecting something in science class, it's going to be to cut it in pieces. To bisect something, you're going to be cutting something exactly in half. So you're going to be dividing a segment into two equal parts. All right. The term that we use for in geometry for equal parts is congruent. Two congruent parts, we say congruent for two pieces that are equal shape, equal size. So if we're given a problem here, B is the midpoint of AC. I'm going to draw that situation here. I have line segment AC. And B is the midpoint. I'm going to draw B exactly in the middle. All right, B is the midpoint of AC. AB is 5x. And BC is 3x plus 4. Well, unlike the last problem, we don't have an entire distance. Yeah, I suppose we could say 5x plus 3x plus 4 is 8x plus 4. We're going to run into some issues. Let me show you here. We're going to run into some issues if we just say 5x plus 3x plus 4, and that's equal to the whole distance, which is 8x plus 4. We're going to run into issues where if we subtract 4 from both sides, those will be gone. Combine these together, that's 8x. Subtract 8x from both sides, we're just going to get 0 equals 0. That's not information that we're necessarily interested in. 0 equals 0, yeah, that's a true statement. It doesn't help us find out how long the distances are. So let's go ahead and scrap that. Instead, if we know that this is bisected, it's a midpoint, we know it's cut exactly in half, we know that the distance AB then is going to be equal to that distance BC. So what we can do here then is we can say that 5x is equal to 3x plus 4, and then we can solve. We can go ahead and subtract a 3x from both sides. That leaves 2x on the one side is equal to a 4. This goes into elementary math. 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. 2 times 2 is equal to 4. That x has to be a 2. So we went ahead and solved x equals 2. Let's look at what this question is asking, though. We want to know how big AB, BC, and AC are. If we plug a 2 back in, 5 times 2 is a 10. We know that AB is a 10. BC, because it's the same distance, is also a 10. We can check that by saying 2 times 3 is a 6, plus a 4 is a 10. How long is AC overall? Well, AC is going to be 10 plus 10 gives us a 20. I'm going to go ahead and write that answer out in the bottom corner here. We know that AB is equal to BC, and those are both 10. We also know that AC overall is a 20. Your assignment for tonight is listed on Moodle. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or bring your questions to class. Have a delightful evening.